It's a moment we've all been waiting for. Let's create our first virtual machine. Now, because this is the pinnacle of the Getting Started with Proxbox series, I want to make sure that we, we just at least do a, a high-level perspective from, from a 10,000-foot view. We installed Proxmox, right? That's, that's what brought us to this interface right here and made it available. We then set up the networking inside of Proxmox, and that was done on the server itself. Now, again, two perspectives, one from the data center as a whole, right? Then this is for the individual servers within the data center. I should have named this Proxmox 1 because as we create more series with this, I plan on doing clustering. We'll have Proxmox 2 and so on and so forth. I can change that. But for the time being, we went in and we set up the network for this server. And I set it up to where it was using a 10 gigabit per second interface. But I used a bridge interface to do that to where if I wanted to switch back to the 1 gigabit per second interface, for whatever reason, I could. And we can group and or, or assign any of these interfaces to specific VLANs. I mean, there's a lot of advanced networking that we could do, but this made the network available at least to the point where we could map it up to our storage, right? Now, when it comes to the storage, it's done at the data center level, which I love because this is where we, we mapped it to an NFS share. And there, I mean, NFS is just one of the different storage options that we could have. There's a ton of them. The reason I love the fact that it's at the data center level rather than the servers is because as you add servers to the data center, it automatically makes that storage available to them. That's awesome because that means I just I kind of plug and play services like add one, add one, add one. We're adding essentially clusters of servers that can then manage multiple VMs, have high availability for VMs uh, to, to where they can, they can all share that same storage just as I add them to the, to the hive, if you will, right? That, that data center uh, cluster right there. So we added the storage via an NFS map, and now we're ready to get in and create our VM. Now, now I should, should mention that in there, I had to enable the processor for virtualization, and I, and I just created a little Ubuntu machine behind the scenes to test and make sure that virtualization was working. But now what I've done is I've downloaded the ISO image for Windows Server 2019. I figured, hey, why not? Let's go Windows on this since we've been talking Linux this entire time, right? Now, now there's plenty of ways that you can get the ISO image. Like I'm, I'm on a Windows 10 machine, right? It's, it's, it's right below me right now. Um, I downloaded it to this machine. I could set up FTP, use a secure copy. You know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to get the ISO image from my computer to the Linux machine running Proxmox. But I think one of the easiest ways is actually go to, to the server itself. And on here, it will show you all of the storage that it has. Now, right here is, is the, o, you know, the OS um, uh, partition, if you will. It's saying, hey, there's 181 gigs all used up. You can't use that. And right there is my Synology. That's, that's the one that we mapped, right? And you can see it says, hey, we've got about two terabytes available. Five terabytes are used. When I click on the content, look at this. Take a look at this. Do you remember when we mapped up the NFS share, it asked us, what is this for? And we selected two options from that dropdown. We said disk images, which is where it, it creates the virtual disks for the virtual machines, and ISO images, right? Well, look at this, right there. There's our disk images, and I can see the disk images for this little Ubuntu machine that I, I spun up just to test it. And then right below, I see the ISO images, where I put the ISO for the Ubuntu machine that I did to test this. And, and one of the easiest ways to put things in there is just to click Upload, right? It says, hey, I'm uploading an ISO image. I'll select the file, and I'll go to my downloads. And right there, there's my uh, Windows Server evaluation that I just got from Microsoft. I'll hit Open upload and right now bam we're sending we're sending that iso image over to the other side so we'll, we'll cut this this out let the file copy and boom the iso image appears right underneath my iso library right so now these iso images are available for me to create virtual machines i'm going to right click on proxmox proxmox hit uh hit uh, uh create virtual machine and it's it's like this little mini wizard wizard like thing right and i can come in here and say all right the name of this will be uh, let's just do win 2019 eval because it's a trial trial version right um do i want to start it when this proxmox server is booted no i'll i'll, I'll say i'll manually start it as i need to it says okay well what what do you, you know where do you want to get the iso for this and and you know do you want to go to a specific place now notice it's pointed at the local right now which if i click this drop down it's like nothing is available 
So I'll say, okay, no, 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 let's go to the Synology. And it automatically knows to look in the ISO folder because that's, it knows that kind of thing is available there. And it says, aha, there's the ISO image that I'm looking for. Now the guest type, oh, there we go. I'm, I'm moving from Linux over to Windows and it's, it automatically has selected for me what version of Windows I would like to use, that, which is 2019. But you can see I have all these other options available to me. Also, if I have, and I don't know that I would, a physical DVD drive on there, I could do that, or I could just not use any media and create an empty virtual machine where I attach something later, or, or I install it through, you know, Pixie Boot or some other method of getting it on there. Now it comes up and says, okay, what kind of system do you want? You know, what BIOS? And I usually just leave all of these things at the default. This is a big one right here. This is how big do you want the virtual drive that stores this OS, right? And I'll, I'll just say, let's just make this guy 100, 100 gigs. I can always add more partitions later. And it's also asking me, where do you want to put that partition, right? Local, local disk on this server is where it's at right now. And I don't want that. I want to put it on the Synology, the NFS that I've mapped to it. Now, one of the things that you, this, this is huge, hugely want to know right now is NFS is great because it's a remote file system. It's one of the most common ones that's available in the Linux world. However, it doesn't support some of the advanced features like snapshots. That's a big deal. If, if you don't know what those are, when you're using a virtual machine, sometimes before you do something dangerous or just as almost like a temporary point in time backup, you can do a snapshot, uh, it, which kind of freezes the disk, the memory, everything. So if, if something goes wrong, let's say you're about to put a new patch on, you're not too sure what the effect could be, do a snapshot of that VM. And then if, if something goes terribly wrong after you install the patch, just say, oh, go back to the snapshot. And it does. Well, NFS does not support that, that function natively if you don't use the right disk format. And it just so happens to be that the, the, the QEMO image format, <laughs> QCOW2, um, is the one that will support snapshots on NFS. It's kind of built into the image itself, a method for doing those kind of things. Now, now some of the nice things is you can just store it to the disk raw. That means you're just writing as if it was a local hard drive, or you can use a v VMware image. Now, the beauty of using VMware as if you want portability, like you want to be able to take these disks and move them to something running VMware, you can if you're using that VMDK format. However, keep in mind, if you're using NFS, you won't be able to do snapshots. So I'm going to keep it on the, uh, the, the QCOW2, if you will, of, of the right method, right? Now, you're also seeing all this stuff below because I have the advanced option checked. I just want you to see it, know that it's there, know that you can control how fast this guy can use the storage so you don't have a machine go you know, crazy and... and ruin the performance for everybody else and so on. Now, this is how, how many processors do you want to give this guy? Now, now the machine that I'm, I'm running on, on the server, I think I've got 24 processors. I don't know. It's crazy. It's, it's a lot. So, so we'll just say, you know, this guy's got, uh, let's do two, let's, let's go crazy. We'll give this guy eight virtual CPUs. And again, if we want to get into the advanced option, we can change all those things below. For now, I'm just going to say eight is fine. Memory, let, yeah, we're talking Windows. <laughs> let's, let's at least give it uh, four gigabytes of, of uh, memory, which is, it's going to be slim pickings for Windows Server 2019. But that's one of the things on my server that I don't have much of is memory. So we'll just give it that for now. Network, it's saying, okay, how do you, know, do you want to bridge this? You know, what interface do you want to bridge this into? And right now I have the bridge selected. I'm not doing any VLANs or any VLAN tags. Again, as, as we get into more advanced series, I'm definitely going to dive into these things and show you how to set up VLANs with Procmox and so on. But for now, we're just wanting to get this virtual machine started. Confirm. Yep, I'll hit finish. And now we've got, it will appear over here. It's, it's spinning, spinning, spinning. There we go. VM100. This is its naming convention that it uses for this. Now, I can go in here. Oh, there we go. The, the actual name that I gave it appeared, win2019-eval. If I wanted to change that, I could go in here on the options, and you can see all of them right here. It looks like a read-only thing, but you can actually click on the name, hit edit, and change the name to whatever you want uh, on a post date. So don't feel like you're fixed into that. This number right here gives you the, it's just an internal naming uh, system, numbering system that Proxmox uses for the VMs, right? So at this point, I can go into this VM, right-click it, and hit start, and we can click on the console to see the console of this machine beginning. And bada bing, just like that, it's loading files off the ISO. This is the Windows Server 2019 installer image getting ready. Boom, and that's it. I'm gonna jump cut straight to this screen just so you can see that we now have the Windows 2019 installer up and running, ready for us to go through the rest of the configuration. And that's, that's where I'm gonna leave off because 
that's where, you know, Windows Server Admin is gonna come in and get it configured, Active Directory set up, group policies configured, and 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 on and on and on and on we go. But 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 freeze frame for just a second. In this short while we've been together, you've gone from zero to hero in, in the sense that we've gone from a base server with literally nothing on it to now a Proxmox server configured for a network mapped to NFS storage and our first virtual machine up and running. Guys, that's powerful. I mean, that, that should get you started with a whole ton of stuff in Proxmox. Now hold the phone. I would say with what you know right now, you've got enough to get started in a lab environment. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there like me that are like, this is awesome. And they run to management and they're like, we can, we can do virtualization for free. You know, and, and it's, and it's true, but I mean, if something were to go wrong, you're not familiar enough to troubleshoot and support this, this kind of environment, do this in a lab environment and use it to continue to get familiar. I'm going to look at the, I'm going to see how many people are interested in this. And if there's enough interest, I'm going to continue building Proxmox series, showing you how to do clustering, setting up high availability, doing a lot of the, the stuff that really makes virtualization powerful so that you can scale this thing and support enterprise class environments with a product like Proxmox. But for now, we've got this thing running, virtual machines set up, my friends, it's that simple.